Hello and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Liz, a disability policy for all. Today I have the pleasure of inter interviewing one of my co-worker, Christine Lau, here at the Association for University Centers on Disability, where she is a program specialist on the LEN team. However, today we will be talking with her of the about her disability. So welcome, Christine. Thank you for having me today, Liz. The first question is, what were your experience of growing up, up and now as a person who is deaf and hard of hearing and working in, um, in the, and be working? Well, so I was born deaf. And I grew up with a hearing family. I identify as capital D deaf, which means that I used American Sign Language and I identify with the deaf community and the deaf culture. But there are a variety of other kind of deaf people such as some may choose to be oral, like me, and some may be just manual, which means they just use sign language. Or there can be a mix of both. So obviously I'm a mix of both. Um, and then working, I've always worked with the disability community and the deaf community. Okay, great. Thanks. Can you can you just say hi or bye uh, so we can know what sign language is? Yeah, don't you say hi, you kind of wait like this a little bit. Okay. Great, thanks. The first, the next question is, do you think that the ADA has gone far enough to help people who are deaf and hard of hearing? Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the positives about ADA. So one part of the ADA talks about employment. So the good news is that deaf people like any other person with disabilities cannot be discriminated for being deaf so we can be hired and employed. Another part of it is that we have equal access to other services, like if you want to go to a movie theater, there will be closed captioning available, or if I want to go to a public event, I can request for a sign language interpreter. And then part of the ADA allowed us just people to make phone calls, so they have a thing called telecommunication. So I can have a relay system, so I can call the relay service and there will be an interpreter and then that relay person will call the person and then that person will sign for me because I have a hard time hearing without an interpreter. But as far as the ADA, um, there are some things that we can like work on. For example, employment, you cannot be discriminated if the organization has 15 or more people. But for me, I want to work for a nonprofit, and most nonprofits are 15 people or less. So that could be difficult for me if I want to branch out to a different nonprofit. I could be discriminated, but there's no legal course of action for me. Or if I want to go to an event, um, you have to request the interpreter in two weeks in advance, or you might not be guaranteed an interpreter. And some say that don't plan for paying for an interpreter or don't realize the expenses associated with it. So sometimes they don't have enough funding for that kind of accommodation. Is there a way that we can solve that issue? I think a way we can solve that issue is by educating people and increasing awareness of accommodation that deaf people may need at events or I think sometimes employers are afraid to hire, just like any other person with a disability, they are afraid to hire deaf people because they're not sure of how to communicate with them or what their needs are. So I think just opening up a conversation would be good. Thank you. And that's why we're doing yeah, exactly. this episode so closely. Yeah. Thank you. The last question is, do you have any suggestion for employers such as AUCD when hiring people who
who are deaf and hard of hearing. Well, one deduction I have, and AUCB actually does this, is have an accommodation line budget. So that way you have a specific line item to provide accommodation, such as interpreters, captioning, or any other accommodation needs you might need for the office. Some other thing I would say is not to be afraid to ask a deaf person what the best way you communicate. Because like I mentioned before, deaf people have different ways of communicating whether it is in sign language or whether they are okay with lip reading or if they prefer um, to maybe not take notes while there's a meeting going on and they need meeting minutes from someone else or something like that. So I think it's important to have that conversation with a deaf person about what works for them. Thank you. I just thought of a question. What if um, there's an organization that you would like to um, employ that has nothing to do with her, the disability you feel like if you wanted to be a bagger at the supermarket or uh, working for GE um, and they are not used to working. AUCD obviously knows a lot about um, but people who are deaf. Because we work in the disability field, but what about those organizations? Well, so my last internship was actually not in the disability community at all. It was at the Jewish Community Foundation. Uh, so in the beginning, it was a little bit uncomfortable because they made some comments. And so I talked with the executive director and I said, hey, I would like to educate yourself on disability community and disability culture. And so I just took like a 15 minute presentation with everyone and talked to them about this is my preferred method of communicating. Here's some background and deaf history and deaf community and deaf culture. And that really helped them a lot. I think some people just need to learn a little bit more. Great. Thank you, and you're a wonderful advocate. Thank you. Thank you, and if you have any more questions about this or any other policy issues, please go to the AUCD webpage and look for this week's in brief. And if you have any questions or comments about this week's Tuesdays with Liz, please leave them in the space. Plus, thanks, and have a nice day. Thanks. Again, Christine. Thank you. Bye.